Mr. Vice Chairman, I would now like to make a few observations on the Ministry of Education. Education is basic to any national regeneration. It is true that it does not bring any return as our other projects do as for instance the steel projects or the irrigation projects do but this is the investment that is designed to help building up of the human material it is agreed that education has expanded after independence and during the plan periods but it is a matter for concern that the content of education has not been equal to our expectations even today we are engaged in experimenting with all types of education from the basic stage up to the university level it is not clear i presume that the basic pattern of education of which so much was said and written is accepted as a success even today where do we stand with regard to the basic pattern it seems to be the position that all arguments in favor of the type of education but all proof is against the success of such a type of education where does the government stand with regard to this type of education we swore by the basic type of education because it was discovered by the father of the nation but if it has been a failure why should not the government say that that is the position then again take secondary education and also collegiate education 3 years ago it was said that all universities should have 3 year degree courses and some universities which were reluctant to accept this reform were more or less compelled to do so and they accepted it now certain universities find that this scheme is not working satisfactorily and they feel that they should have a two year course in the college before students could enter the degree course i mention this to show that this eternal tinkering with education should stop and it should not go on like this this uncertainty is not only with regard to the main objective of education the main structure of education from the primary to the collegiate level but also with regard to the courses of studies and also with regard to the language or medium of instruction mr chairman up to the secondary stage it has been accepted that the medium of instruction should be the regional language 
the National Integration Council, however, stated that if universities are to exchange professors, if they have to develop freely, then there should be the common medium of instruction, namely English and Hindi. Now, at the latest National Integration Council meeting, we are told that the medium of instruction in the colleges should also be the regional language ultimately and if that comes to pass, I ask how will national integration be achieved? It is permissible to envisage a stage if the scheme of the National Integration Council is implemented where different universities will have different medium of instruction and the men that will be drawn from these universities will have to men the judiciary of the land and the all India services but they will not be able to serve in the state other than the one in which they were educated. How can integration be achieved? We are working at cross purposes. It is time that a high power body was appointed to hammer out a national scheme of education having integration as the basic aim and to implement it systematically. The present method of meddling at every stage of education, the present climate in which we are not clear about the medium of instruction at different stages is causing concern to the parents, to the pupils and weakening the country in the process. This is a major problem at this stage of the development of the country. Then Mr. Vice Chairman, I would pass on to the Ministry of Transport and Communications. According to this ministry, we are to build a system of national highways, provincial or state highways, an integrated system of communications from the village upwards, but the central government is concerned with the construction of national highways. It is good to have a fine system of national highways. It also serves as a physical link for integrating the nation. It is good but this planning of construction of national highways without regard to the development of railways and the development of industries in the regions in which the highways are proposed to be constructed will be something beyond our means at the present moment. Assuming that we have a network of national highways, are they to be put to immediate use? Are they good investments? Unless you have industries, small, big or medium, coming along the highways, unless they assure you a fair return for the investment, 
it is not desirable to have a system of highways for the sake of mere transport of passengers